Yeah, in this video, we're going to talk about two ways you can divide two polynomials. Um, we're going to need this for things going forward, like graphing polynomials. So um, for our first example, we're going to divide x cubed plus 2x squared plus 2x plus 1, divide that by x plus 2. And the first way we're going to do this is going to be using polynomial long division, which is really like the long division you used to do when you were in grade school. And so I think before we even do polynomial long division, it might be helpful to think about the division algorithm with numbers. So say I wanted to divide three into 172. So remember the first thing you ask yourself is how many times can three go into, in this case, 17, and that would be five times. When we put that five there, we then multiply it by the three. That gives us 15. And we bring that down and we're subtracting. In reality, we're really subtracting 150 from 172. But the way it's typically taught is we subtract that, we get a two. And then we bring down this remaining two. So now we have a 22. And we repeat the process. Three goes into 22 seven times. 7 times 3 gives me 21. Again, we'll subtract. That's going to leave me with a remainder of 1. In grade school, when you first learn long division, a lot of times we'll just say it's 57 remainder 1. Uh, and then you get a little more sophisticated, and you realize that what that really means is the answer is 57 and 1 third. So this divided by your divisor. And the way it's going to look when we do it with polynomials, 57 and 1 third is the same thing as 57 plus 1 third, right? So keep that in mind. This is how we're going to express our answer when we do it with polynomials. So we want to divide x plus 2 into x cubed plus 2x squared plus 2x plus 1. Now, so it's the same algorithm. Of course, it is a little different. Uh, seems a little strange to ask yourself, how many times does this go into this, right? So another way to think about it, the way I think about it is whatever I put here, I'm going to multiply by x plus 2, bring it down underneath here, and then I'm going to subtract. And what I would at least like to get, I'd like to generate an x cubed term so that these will cancel. So with that in mind, do you see that I would want to put an x squared up here? That way, when I multiply x squared by x, I get x cubed, but I also get 2x squared. And I'm supposed to be subtracting. So x cubed minus x cubed cancels. And by chance, 2x squared minus 2x squared also cancels. So I don't get anything here. But remember, we're supposed to bring down whatever's left there. So we still have that 2x plus 1 and repeat the process. So now I'm looking for something that when I put it here, multiply it by x plus 2, this time I'd like to generate a 2x because I'm going to end up subtracting, right? And I want the 2x to cancel. So if I just put a plus 2, 2 times x plus 2 gives me 2x plus 4. 2x minus 2x, of course, cancels. 1 minus 4 gives me a remainder of negative 3. So how we'll write our answer? We could write it as x squared plus 2. We could write, either write it as plus negative 3 over x plus 2. Um, so this is totally fine. You could write it like this. Or you could, I suppose, take that negative and apply it down to the bottom. You could say this is x squared plus 2 minus 3 over x plus 2. Either one is fine. Now, there is another way you can do the long division, and this is um, a shortcut, and it's called synthetic division. And uh, my only issue with this is it is sort of a just a, a, an algorithm that you just memorize. Um, you don't really get too much insight into why it works, and, and uh, um, there are some limitations to using synthetic division, which we'll talk about in a minute here. But for this one, it would work. So if I want to divide x cubed plus 2x squared plus 2x plus 1 divided by x plus 2, which we know is equivalent of dividing this x plus 2 into 2x cubed 
No, just x cubed plus 2x squared plus 2x plus 1. What we do, and we already did that with polynomial long division, what we do is we, uh, what number makes my divisor equal to 0? That would be negative 2. So we're going to separate out this negative 2. And then we're going to just use the coefficients of the polynomial that we want to divide x plus 2 in. So we have 1, 2, 2, and 1. Draw a line down here. And uh, we usually also will explain this in a minute, what that's going to mean. Now, it's a totally different algorithm here. So the first thing we do is we just bring this one down. OK, bring this one down. And then what we do is we multiply negative 2 times 1. I'm going to say multiply. And that answer is going to go here. So negative 2 times 1 gives me an answer of negative 2. And then from here to here, what we're actually doing is we're going to add, add these numbers. And that's the thing. When we do division, you normally think you're subtracting, right? That's how it works with polynomial long division. But with synthetic division, we're going to add these numbers together. So that gives me 0. And then we repeat the process. So I would multiply the negative 2 times the 0, which gives me 0. I would add these numbers. That gives me 2. Negative 2 times positive 2 gives me negative 4. 1 plus negative 4 is negative 3. And maybe you can start to see what this means now. You have to think about when we divide X plus, a linear term, x plus 2, into a cubic equation, what degree would we end up with? Well, we can tell. We already did the division, right? When we divided x plus 2 into x cubed, we end up with a degree 2 term. That kind of makes sense, right? Because you have a degree 1. If you divide it into a degree 3, you should be left with a degree 2 term. So, and then the other way you can think about it is this is your, so how I interpret this, this is my 2. This 0 is there. You could think of that as 0x, and this 1 would represent 1x squared. And what is this? This is my remainder, right? When we did it with polynomial long division, we saw that we had a remainder of negative 3, which we put over x plus 2. So the last number you end up with right here is always going to be your remainder. And we saw that we could write that as just plus negative 3 over x plus 2, or put the negative down there. Either way is fine. But that's the same answer, right? And of course, 0x is really 0. You don't really need to write that. I was just trying to show what that 0 meant. All right, let's try another one. So let's do this one. We have x to the fifth plus 3x cubed minus 6 divided by x minus 1. Let's do the same thing. Let's first use polynomial long division. So we want to divide x minus 1 into. Now, I chose this example for a reason. We do have x to the fifth. You're going to want to line up your um, what you're dividing into. Even if you don't have an x to the fourth term, you, you want to put a placeholder there. So I'm going to call that 0x to the fourth, because there isn't any x to the fourth. I have 3x cubed. I don't have an x squared term, so I'm going to, but I'm going to put a placeholder, 0x squared. Same thing for x. And then finally, my constant term. You're going to see why we want to have those placeholders. OK, so to figure out what goes in first, whatever I put here, I'm going to multiply by x minus 1. And I'd like to generate an x to the fifth so that when I subtract, it's going to cancel. So that's going to have to be just x to the fourth, which gives me x to the fifth minus x to the fourth. x to the fifth cancel. Now, this is why it's helpful to have a placeholder, because what I'm going to get here is nothing minus a negative x to the fourth, minus a negative. That's actually going to give me a positive x to the fourth. Bring everybody else down, or at least the next few terms. But I'm, I'm going to go ahead and write them all. And we're just repeating the process. Now I'd want to put an x cubed. 
So when I multiply that, I'm going to get x to the fourth minus x cubed. We're going to subtract x to the fourth cancel. 3x cubed minus a negative x cubed means really adding. So I'm going to have 4x cubed plus all of this remaining stuff. To cancel out a 4x cubed, now I'm going to want to have a 4x squared. So that will give me 4x cubed minus 4x squared. Subtract. That cancels 0x squared minus negative 4x squared gives me positive 4x squared. I need a 4x. 4x times that gives me 4x squared minus 4x. Almost done here. 4x squared cancel. 0x minus negative 4x is 4x. And this will be the last round here because if I put a four there, that will give me four X minus four, which when I subtract negative six minus negative four is gonna leave me with the remainder of negative two. And so I could write my answer as all of this. Again, remember if it's negative, I think it's easier to just put the negative there, minus two over X minus one is my answer. We could also do this one with synthetic division. And I think you'll see here why synthetic division is so appealing because it is so much faster. Synthetic division, here we go. So we're gonna wanna take, remember we had, we wanted to divide x minus one into x to the fifth. You don't have to write this down. I'm just rewriting it because it's at the top of my page. So using synthetic division, what makes this linear factor equal to zero? It's going to be positive one this time. So that's gonna get separated out. And then I'm gonna use my coefficients and just like I did with long division, in fact, you have to do this with synthetic division. You need to include zeros for any of the um, degree terms that you don't have. So I would have one X to the fifth, zero X to the fourth, 3x cubed, 0x squared, 0x, and then minus a 6, just like we did with the polynomial long division. Okay, we'll bring the 1 down. Remember, here we're multiplying. 1 times 1, that's 1 goes there. And here we're adding 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 3 plus 1 is 4. 1 times 4 is 4, 0 plus 4 is 4, 1 times 4 is 4 again, that's also 4, 1 times 4 is 4, negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2, which was our remainder when we did it with polynomial long division. And then, yeah, if you, you could, of course, reason that this has to be x to the fourth, and that has to be x cubed, but if you're not really sure, you could always just start at the... Uh, at the end here, I know this is gonna be my remainder. So I know it's gonna be minus two over X minus one. This is my constant term. This must be my linear term four X. This must stand for four X squared, four X cubed, and well, not four, one X cubed, and then one X to the fourth. So obviously much faster, right? Um, I, I still warn you though, um, since while synthetic division is very quick and easy, um, there are some limitations of it. So you still need to know polynomial long division. And this is the place where there is a limitation. I can only use synthetic division if I'm dividing by a linear term. Go back to the one here. We were dividing by x minus one. My first example, we were dividing by x plus two. And that's what tells me what number to put in here, right? Is what makes that linear term equal to zero. In fact, let's write that down. What makes x plus two equal to zero? That's why we put the negative two there. 
But if you're doing a division problem where your divisor is not a linear term, synthetic division is not an option. So I'm going to put note can only use synthetic division if dividing by a linear term. Okay, so that's a really big restriction and it limits to how much, how, how many times we get to use this nice synthetic division. So our only option here, what that means is since this is not a linear term, right? That's a degree two term. We must use, so I'm gonna put degree two divisor. So we must use polynomial long division. So we're going to divide x squared minus 2x plus 2 into x cubed. We should put a placeholder. There is no x squared term. Plus 6x plus 3. In order to generate an x cubed term, all I do need to do is multiply by an x. And that's customary. You don't have to do this. But notice I put my x over the x term here. But you can put it anywhere you want. x times all of this gives me x cubed minus 2x squared plus 2x. So I need to subtract all of that. x cubes cancel. 0x squared minus negative 2x squared is positive 2x squared. 6x minus 2x is 4x. And I'll bring down the three. In order to generate a two x squared now, multiplying by this, I just need to put a plus two. So I'll give me two x squared minus four x plus four, which we're going to subtract. That cancels four x minus negative four x is actually adding four x, so that is eight x. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. And I won't be able to divide that anymore because I have a higher degree that I'm trying to divide into a linear term. So this will be my remainder. It can be a function. It doesn't have to be a number. So I would write that as plus 8x minus 1 over x squared minus 2x plus 2. Okay. So that's polynomial long division and synthetic division. And then the next few videos, we're going to see, we're going to use both of those um, to help us find zeros, uh, roots, x-intercepts of polynomials and, uh, and, and getting into graphing polynomials. We will use both of these tools.